go. <laughs> All right. We are live. Live in the Art of Craftsmanship shop. Let's see. All right. Howdy from the West Coast. Good morning, everybody. West Coast. Oh, man, you're early. What, 9, 8, 7, 6? 6, 6 a.m. from the West Coast. Nice. All right, Steel Blade, JP, Lord Wilson. Good to see you. All right, let's make sure this is all the way down. Good, perfect. All right. Things looking okay. Morning, guys. Welcome to... Uh, the Virtual Craft Festival. My name is Dustin O'Hara. If you don't already know me, the Art of Craftsmanship. I'm here in my shop. Let me, let's see. I think it feels good. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. I have done several lives, but still not like <laughs> well enough to get all the gear set up. Eventually, Devin and I will get all the gear set up well, and we'll be able to like have multiple things going, multiple angles, but for now, phone's up on the tripod. I have the tripod. I have the computer over here so I can see your chats. Um, and I will try to keep an eye on this. Um, I was invited by Jamie Page, JP Woodwork, to um, join the Virtual Craft Festival. So here I am, and this is awesome. Hello from Germany. Hello, everybody. We're going to wait a few more minutes till we get some more people in. Um, we have 40 people hanging out now. Welcome, everybody. Let's see. Uh, I need to make sure I make JP a moderator so he can put some comments in. Let's see, add moderator. There we go. Morning, Jamie. All right. And Carl. Carl, you look that smart. Oh, Devin's here. Devin O'Hara can't be here this morning, but that's okay. That's my brother Devin, who runs our craftsmanship with me. If you don't know, he's there in the chat, so he can also answer plenty of questions and things like that. Craft Festival is a great idea. Keeps us all out of trouble for a while. For a while, that's a good call. We can get in trouble in the shop, right? Hang out in the shop and have fun with each other. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure I am talking loud because I don't have my microphone set up. We've tried multiple times with mic setups with the camera and stuff and the phone, it's kind of funky. It doesn't work great, so that's okay. We're just gonna keep on talking. Got plenty of shop, loud shop stuff to uh, blow your ears out throughout the live stream. So I'll be on live until 10 o'clock. Um, and then coming up right after me is, hmm, I had his name, but I can't remember off the top of my head. JP will let you know in the chat and we'll make sure we uh, give you guys a link for the next live stream after me from 10 to 11 on here on the East Coast. All right, I am still teaching Johnny G's DIY. I still teach uh, Baltimore City Schools. I teach architecture to 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Costas, yes, Costas, coming up next. Um, let's see, let's see, who else do we have here? Shane Hurst, a bunch of people. All right, let me go see if Devin, I'm gonna make him a moderator as well, just in case he needs to add any links or anything or help anybody out. So, JP, JP, I don't, I think that I can make you both moderators. Yeah, that should be fine. All right. Michelle Higgins, YB Woodshed, Robert Dolman, Shane Hurst, Chris Dodds, Chris Geshenwind, Shenwind. Volume is good on my end. Awesome. All right. So, uh, we're going to get started. I want to make sure I have, oh, Doug Miller, nice, good to see you. Um, I want to make sure that I have enough time to work through what I want to show you now. What I was thinking about doing today is to show you how I prototype uh, knife designs before I make them. So I found that um, over the years making knives, I often will make a knife that I think is really good or I like I'll shape it and it'll be ready. I think it's really good and then I find that there's something that I don't like about it, usually in the fit, right? Obviously the finish, I can control that throughout the whole process, but the fit, either the handle length or the blade length or the shape, 
something in the design of the knife I'm not 100% happy with. So I started uh, doing prototypes because then I can kind of live with the shape of that knife before it's um, before I make the final thing. Uh, this is kind of the first one that I did. These are two wooden prototypes. Um, this was the first one I had an idea, right? Drew out my idea. Um, and I was like, I wanted a shorter Puko style knife, shorter handle, shorter blade, something that's like versatile length, but not too big. Um, so I made this. And this had a, I think it's a four inch handle. So I made this first and um, you know, all my design is exactly how I drawn it. There's a, a general taper down to the point. There's a flat edge on the spine of the blade. Uh, and then the back of the handle, the spine of the handle comes up to a point in the middle of the handle and comes down. And the bottom of the handle is flat, right? That was designed on purpose to be able to sit flat on the surface. It's an octagonal handle. You can see that from there. But that was specifically designed to be able to sit down on the surface and not roll away. One of the things that's kind of nice. Um, and it also feels really well, feels really good in the handle, the octagonal handle. Now, I liked, I really liked my drawing of this design, but it wasn't until I made the template that I realized that it's just a little bit off. Like it's, it would have been okay and it could work fine, but something wasn't right about it visually and I realized the handle was just a little too short. So then I made the second version. Now this is only, let's see on the spine, we're a quarter inch longer, so four and a quarter. This made a huge difference in the visual and also the usability of that knife. Uh, the way it fits in my hand is better. Make sure that's up there, you can see. I'm gonna get in the light there. Yeah, I should have my light on behind, but I have, I have the, uh, Anything else working? Let me put a little light on the subject, or extra light on the subject. One second, let's move a spotlight over. Okay, not sure what happened. Not sure why we're getting interruptions. Oh, sorry everybody. I know, it's too frustrating. I'm trying. I'm gonna try and stay on top of that. Um, hopefully we're back. All right. Um, yeah, sorry about that guys. It's my connection's not great down here. So I'll try to keep an eye on that. Uh, make sure that we stay connected, um, here in the shop. Let me see. I think give me one second. Let me check something real quick. I might be able to change. I know it's really frustrating. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry guys. Um, one, sorry everybody. Sorry. That's the, uh, unfortunate All right, my fault guys. Um, it's the unfortunate nature of being in a shop in a basement. So half sunken, I've probably got about, you know, two feet of my basement that's actually above the ground, everything else is stone. So I had this concrete foundation. Uh, I switched to Wi-Fi. I try to use my internet, it works better, but I switched to Wi-Fi. So we'll hope, hopefully the Wi-Fi um, will be better. Okay. How's it look? Okay. All right. <laughs> so going back to this, right? So we're working on templates. So this one made a huge difference, right? So then that is that ended up being the knife that I made. So this makes this, but it was specifically because I was able to make that template um, that I decided to go with that length. And then this makes, it feels much better in my hand, and I didn't have to go through the process of making this first, um, and then not being happy with the way it turned out, and then having to go through the whole process, because this takes a lot less time. All right, uh, another example I want to show real quick. How's the feed look? It looks a little, a little blurry on mine. Hopefully it's okay on your guys' end. So, another blade that I made. Uh, recently was the Gyoto, right? This is the Gyoto that I made um, during the, sh the Knife Maker Challenge on YouTube uh, about a year ago. Um, 
And the same thing with this, right? I had a design for it. I thought I really liked it, but I learned from that, the journey knife. And so I figured, why not make a prototype? So I made two prototypes, right? Different handles, similar blade. Like I kind of, I kind of, I made the blade. It was okay. I liked it. Uh, this was the first one that I made, which has a curved handle. And so this was like, okay, it wasn't great. Um, I wasn't I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a curved handle or a straight handle. Um, so then I made this one, which I actually liked a lot better. Now, it was a combination of the two things, right? Because this one has a short handle and this one has a longer handle, which I liked better. Um, but this one had the straight bottom where this one has a curved bottom. All right, so curved, straight. So again, work through those issues in wood rather than in steel and all your fine materials will take more time. Uh, and then that way you can kind of figure out what works for you and you're happy with that. All right, the last one I did make a little uh, wooden template. This is one for a knife that I made for my wife um, and she wanted a small kind of EDC user uh, and kind of Puko style with a carved handle, hidden tang, so I made this one. Um, I ended up originally making it a little bit shorter and then uh, it was a little short in her hand, so I expanded it and I actually just glued a piece on directly onto the back of this. You can see that line there. I just cut, glued a new piece on and shaped it an extra quarter inch and it made all the difference in her hand. So again, Wooden prototypes for the win. So I'm going to now. Um, I'm going to start showing you how I make my prototype. All right. So how are we looking? I don't see any comments. I want to make sure that people are still here. People comment. Um, it's a little bit blurry. Do you guys all see a blurry screen, or do you see an okay screen? How does it look? Any comments in the chat? Let's see, I don't know why. I'm gonna make sure that we're all still here. Technical difficulties. How are we looking? Blurry, okay. All right, it's blurry. Um, all right, let me change real quick. I'm gonna switch over to um, my other Wi-Fi and see if that works better. And I'll just keep an eye on the camera. Give me one second. All right. All right, so I'll just try to keep an eye on. <laughs> Blurry, yeah, okay. Yeah, my, um, my Wi-Fi is not great, which is usually why I don't use that. All right, yeah. All right, thanks, Doug, I appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna get started. So I already have my design for a new Chef's Nice thumb that I'm gonna work on. Um, this obviously is based similarly off of the Gyoto, but this is a Santuco style with a curved, uh, a curved down blade. It's still blurry. Oh well, sorry guys. Hopefully this clears up. Not too awfully bad though. All right. Um. So I already made up this design, right? So this is assuming that you have a design that you already like. You kind of figure it out in your head. I have measurements on here specifically that I can replicate <clears throat> in steel or in wood. So I'm gonna do that now, um, specifically following that line. So first thing, I do have a few reference points that are straight specifically, so that way I can um, start with my straight line. I'm gonna start with the spine across the back and we'll draw this up. I'm gonna do this pretty quick because there's no need for you guys to sit here and watch me draw the whole time, but I figured it'd be nice to draw directly on this piece of pine. This is a three quarter piece of pine, so I'm gonna draw my design out on this. I could have also traced this, but uh, this works fine too. I have all my measurements. So I have five and five and a quarter, so I'm looking at 10 and a quarter before my drop. I'm the drop of the Santuco, so I'll mark off 10 and a quarter, mark off five for my handle, and then we have a two inch Heel. I'm going to drop that down two inches right there and then a six and a half inch blade cutting edge six and a half inch cutting edge now I used uh, a compass to do some lines now with this one because the k-tip was straight which I really liked um, I wanted uh, a straight 
front bolster to my handle and then a straight back, right? Lots of uh, kind of geometric shapes against the kind of nice gentle curve of the blade. Um, but this one, because the Santuco has the curved tip, I wanted to mimic those curves in the handle. So kind of that design aesthetic, right? Keep those curves moving. It'll help the flow, the look of the knife, which, you know, half the time, just liking the look of your knife is uh, just as important as the feeling and the way it works because you're going to want to pick it up and use it. Um, I will be, I will be hand carving. Yes, I'll be shaping, cutting and shaping and showing you how I do the whole process. Um, the nice thing about doing this as well is that you get practice on grinding bevels. You get to practice on all that on wood. So I definitely highly uh, encourage you to, I mean, make, make templates just for that, just to practice on how you can grind, practice that form. All right, so I have my compass. Uh, I'm going to, let's, so let's draw a curve here for the tip. And I'll check the length of that. Make sure I have six and a half. Okay, that's six and a half. I'm gonna bring that tip up just a little bit. One and an eighth. So I have a measurement from where my where the <clears throat> the Santuku Santuco curve starts. And then six and a half goes to here. So I have a specific measurement for the height of the end of my blade where the Santuco curve starts. So I know where to start that. And then the height, the length of the cutting edge and also the uh, also the the length of the spine so I have those marks so I can actually draw my measurements based off of that <clears throat> okay like that like that so I can use my compass to set up those curves now I've drawn on here this is a straight spine I'm gonna drop this just a little bit here so about two inches and then curve this up now I'm not gonna worry too much about this I'm leaving the cutting edge flat right now because I will be uh, cutting it on the bandsaw I'll trim it a shape yeah all right yes so Douglas I'm doing a wooden template to get the feel of the knife right feel what it feels like in the hand um, it's it's a huge difference between a drawing of your knife and being able to actually hold it and also being able to give your customer a template that you know if my customer being myself right be able to actually feel what it feels like in the hand um, but also like with my wife when I was making hers I was able to hand this to her and actually have her put it in her hand and feel it um, you know with all the right dimensions and curve to see how she liked the feel and she knew that as soon as she put it in when it was like Four inches or whatever it was that it just felt too short and then I went to four and a quarter and it felt right so I was able to actually avoid the whole process of giving her a knife that didn't fit right all right so let's see let me uh, check on my connection look good connection looks good okay all right so I have the blade start started to be drawn out on my wood um, I'll do this in marker so you guys can see it I have my pencils here. Let's see, I'll change this to be a marker so you can see it on the live. All right. That and this, um, like I said before, I'm just going to use a straight, uh, I'm using a straight, a flat edge on my edge right now because um, I want to be able to cut it on the bandsaw and then I will curve that later because you definitely need some curve in most chef's knives. All right, so we got six and a half is here and the handle is three quarter, not nope, seven eighths. I'm going to come up to five and a quarter, five and a quarter is where my handle starts and this is straight. Here, that is one and an eighth. I have all these measurements specifically, so I can replicate this drawing as good as possible. Seven eighths, and then the end of the handle is an inch and a quarter out here. Inch and a quarter. So I have a, a nice taper in my handle that feels really good because it fills up the back of your hand. 
and you have a, a shorter front and a wider back. I mean, you can also get like a nice palm swell. A lot of, a lot of um, chef's knives will have a good palm swell in the middle, it'll go wide and then narrow again. I like having this fill, you know, with my pinch grip, it fills up the back of my hand really nicely so I can grab really well with my fingers in the back and pinch in the front. That, all right, now we're gonna go, let's see, this is here from tip to that is six and three quarters inches. So we'll come here, six and three quarters starts right there. I'm just making my reference marks so that way I can make my curves. And then from that is four inches out. Finish this up real quick and then we'll get started shaping. And I'll show you how I do my different shaping. Uh, let's see, oh, I need a good scrap. The height of my wood, all right. So that there and that again. So this is the same angle, the same curve as the tip of the Santuco. So the tip, the back of the handle, and the front of the handle all follow the same curve. So that, that, and again, it's just like a visual thing to really help with the aesthetic of that handle to be able to replicate that curve. All right, so that, and then the actual finger guard is a little different. Measure twice, cut once, exactly. <laughs> Measure like, you know, draw and shape with wood two, three, four times, make out of steel once. general shape here this is coming turning here and going back I like a little bit of a heel on the back of my knives have them come back so that way when you're pinching up tight in here that your blade actually comes below your finger so you can kind of get all the way back it's kind of nice my wife is not super particular of that because she'll often catch her finger on the back of that and <laughs> and cut it sometimes so you can bring that back some. All right, so there's that. There's our curves for the handle. Now, I will be trying to mimic these so I can get the feel of it because I haven't actually done that. Hold that up. Uh, kind of see that. Perfect, but that's okay. Um, pretty low audio. Okay, I'll, again, I'll try to keep talking louder. All right, so now I have my general shape drawn on my wood. So next step is to cut it on the bandsaw. Let me bring you guys over to the bandsaw. We'll trim this out. Then I will mark my spine and then I'll actually cut the blade shape so we kind of get the real feel of it. And then we'll carve the hand, then we'll shape the handle down some. All right, let's move you over here. Over to the bandsaw. There we go. Weld a bit back on. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not a welder, unfortunately. <laughs> but I do agree. <laughs> That's a good uh, good thing as well. Just weld them on. Eventually. Eventually. I, you know, I'm trying. Okay. Got my protection. Light. All right. So I'm going to trim this out now on the bandsaw. Again, I have my shape cut. And we'll just cut this out. And then we'll draw the spine and then we'll cut out the shape of the blade.
Are we looking good? Okay. There, so there's the general shape. So far, so good. I like the length of the handle. It's a five inch. Now I'm gonna move you guys back over. Um, actually, I'm gonna move us over to the grinder. And we'll do a little grinding. Try not to block the camera. There we go. All right. On the subject. Again, that's the whole benefit of those clamp lights. Moving stuff around. Hopefully, this time when I move my clamp lights around, I don't lose my what sort of handle. Then we are making a template. All right, keep walking away. You can't hear me. We're making a template, a uh, prototype for a chef's knife, kind of a short chef's knife, a six and a half inch blade. Um, so that's what I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to kind of clean up the edge a little bit with on the grinder, so I'm just going to clean this up and then we'll be able to draw the blade on the spine uh, and then trim out the blade so it's actually the right width on the bandsaw and then we'll come back over to the grinder. So back and forth a little bit, um, I'm going to, oh I've got my water over here, I'm going to throw in my respirator and then we'll uh, clean this up a little bit on the grinder. This is a 36 grit belt on the Revolution 2x72 grinder from Brian House, housemade.us. Little plug for my buddy Brian. All right. Okay, now let's move you back over to the middle. Move us back to the bench. Okay. Okay, so now we have. So now I have the shape cut out of the Santuco. Let me move you guys in just a smidge more. Make sure we can see everything okay. Maybe I'll move us in and tip us down just a little bit. Live in the shop. I made sure I'm off my head a little bit, but that's okay. That's all right. I'd rather have us be able to see what I'm doing. So there's the Santuco. Uh, there's the shape cut out. Pretty happy with that, right? So far it feels nice. Kind of choke up on it. Um, this handle, I went out to five inches, where this one I think is four and a half. Um, I'm okay with that. And I have my handle shape drawn on. I'm going to replicate that handle shape on the other side too, because we're going to need that to be able to grind both sides. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just draw myself a center line. Now, um, I can use my compass to draw a center line, or I can use a scribe. So here's a marking gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this 
to, this is three quarters, so I'll do three eighths. So I get three eighths, half and three quarters. So then I have my scribe and I can just scribe myself a center line going down the back. And I'm doing it on the back because um, I'm gonna be using the bandsaw to cut a, uh, cut my blade. And I want to be able to use this flat edge to keep it flat on the bandsaw while I'm cutting. All right, so there's my center line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do, always do two center lines when you're making a knife from both directions because it's always a little bit off or potentially a little bit off. There we go. Now reinforce that with my pen. Let's see, we go here, right down the center line. All right, so there we have center line. I'm gonna continue this all the way down to the end. There we go. So now I have my center line drawn. Improved twofold, good, I'm glad. Carl, good to see you. So Carl and, let's see, I'll make Carl a moderator too. There we go, everybody in here is a moderator. <laughs> all right, yeah, short, <laughs> short chef. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a full chef, it's kind of a, it's a six and a half inch. So this, the person I'm making this for wanted it slightly shorter, like that. And he has one similar to it, so that's what I'm working on. All right, so there's my center line. Now I'm gonna mark off my handle across the top. So here's the top of my handle right across. So I'm drawing that, um, and I'm gonna mimic that on the bottom, do the same thing, draw across here. And then I'm going to copy that curve. Again, using my, using my compass to draw that curve. Now, this may not end up turning out exactly like um, the final product because I'm doing this on a grinder without, having to sh without being able to shape the handle separately before I put it on. So if the curve is not exactly right, that's okay. It's more about you know, getting the feel of it, right? So I will, I'll be, I'll do my best to get that in. All right, so there's handle on both sides, center line. I'm gonna bring this center line around and I'm just doing this with my finger. A little trick, you put your finger on the edge, you can slide straight down the edge. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn it on the other side and just do it to make sure it looks about the same. So there's a the center line. Now the nice thing about this is that it doesn't really matter how perfect your center line is for the um, prototype it's just about the feel now I want to set my width I'm gonna do this a little bit bigger I'm just probably gonna do it about a quarter inch or so just to have some material because it's not you know all that important so now I'm gonna work my way down the edge again the finger trick drawing my line on both sides to get my blade thickness because I am gonna cut this out because it does it is important to have the, uh, to have that blade feel right in your hand. And this doesn't feel right, but this feels right, right? You can get the pinch grip, you feel it, the feel right in your hand. So we really want to get that feeling right, and that's the nice thing about the prototype. It's obviously not the right weight, but that's okay. All right, what do we got, 936. All right, so now I'm gonna head over to the bandsaw, I'm gonna trim this again, and then we'll head back over to the grinder, and I'll show you how I grind this down, and we'll take a look at it. Mechanical pencil, and if so, have a preference. Um, this is a flare pen. This is a mechanical pencil. This is, you're probably referencing, this is a Paper Mate. Um, what is it called? Paper Mate. I forget, it's like Extreme or something. I love this pencil. Um, this one specifically is a, is a point, is, an, oh, is a 0 0.05 millimeter. I like actually the seven more. Um, I like the thicker lead, but I have these too, so I use them occasionally. But this has a steel body, which makes a difference because I always wear it in my pocket and it always breaks. All right, let's head over to, back over to the bandsaw. We got 20 minutes, so this shouldn't take very long. Head back to the bandsaw. There we go. Over here, let me... There we go. A little bandsaw action. Now I'm going to be using again i'm going to be using the flat face 
of the blade currently as my resting on this. Make sure I go in far enough. Bring my saw down just a little bit. This is also just, this is all just going to be kind of grinding by or cutting by eye just straight down the line. It's not super particular, but I will be grinding this so it'll clean up the edges. So I'm going to grind just a little bit heavy. Just a quick tip when you're grinding, uh, or I'm sorry, when you're cutting this out on the bandsaw, don't cut these off yet. Just cut it straight in and back out. That way I still have the rest of this platform when I come over to grind this, to cut this other one. If I were to cut this off now, then I'd just be resting on that quarter inch piece of uh, wood and trying to cut down the middle. This just leaves me the full three quarter inch wood to go directly down. On. This off now. cutting through the center of the wood there. So now I have a blade that is generally shaped and now I can move back over to the grinder and I can try to put a bevel on this because again, the bevel is not super important. It's mostly the handle shape and the feel and so far I'm really happy with that. All right, let's move you back. Let's move you back. Back to the grinder. Back to the grind. Now I'm gonna bring us close again. All right, let's do this side so we can see what's happening. And how's our angle? Looking good, we'll bring us down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now, just being dug good, everybody's here. Okay, cool. I'll bring this over. Now I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna start by grinding just the shape of the, the handle here first. I'll grind down on this. And then I'll, uh, then I'll start working my bevels and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Dropped my mask in the water bucket just now. That was fun. <laughs> All right. How are we looking? Good, good. Okay.
Now I'm bringing up my work rest. One second, let me grab my angle finder. Again, I want this handle to feel just like the, uh, the one in the future that I'm going to be making. So I'm going to bring in the work rest. I'm going to change the angle of this to, I think it's an angle to 45. Bring this up. There we go. Okay. Check it. So that's 30. Let's see. Approximately 45 is what we're looking for. Degrees. This is the magnetic angle finder. Works really well. Now, get this set. This is really nice. I mean, if I want my angle specific, you know, I can just just set my. Uh, yeah, good. Set my work rest where I run it, and then. And then now I can put on my angles on the edge of this. There's the 45s on the handle. I'm gonna do rough in the front of it because that's important too. That's where the pinch is. And then we'll work on some bevels.
Got about uh, 12 more minutes or so in our live. So I'll show you, I'm gonna do some freehand bevel grinding. I'm gonna work edge up and then I'm gonna push straight in and draw back with my thumb on the edge where I want the pressure, keeping it right in the middle. And we'll just work. I mean, this is obviously, it doesn't, it's not super important that it has a great edge, but it is important that it feels and looks right. So that way we can get a feeling of it. Now, again, this edge is still, um, it's still a little too uh, flat. I'll bring this up a little bit too before. I'll probably bring this up and then I'll redraw the line. All right. <clears throat> So here you can see, whoops, flipped it to reverse. Uh, it only takes a little bit. I mean, really for the edge of a knife, you don't want it flat for any type of like general use chef's type knife. Um, but really just a little bit, you can tell it's it's not, it's not uh, that far off of being flat, but it's just important that you don't have a flat edge on a blade that's gonna cut because you're gonna have gaps. Like if you have a flat edge, inevitably it's gonna be concave the opposite direction. You're gonna have gaps. So this way I have a gentle curve along that edge that just gives me, that way I know that when I'm cutting, I have a, a rocking surface that's gonna to touch completely on the edge. All right, now we'll grind some bevels. So again, I'm gonna be working face up, push straight in, work back. I'm gonna work a little bit of a distal taper. I need to draw, redraw my line, my marker. And this is just a general center line, which I'll keep an eye on. Again, it's good to learn how to kind of do bevels the same in both directions. And I'll actually do the way I do an actual knife where I cut a 45 on the edge first, right to my line, and then I'll work back on the bevels from there. So there's a really good knife maker's trick. Grind 45s or ish, you know, bevels right to your line first. That way you establish that center line and then you already have that ready. Then all you have to do is grind back and fit, you know, kind of remove the material between your spine and your edge or how far you want your bevels to come back. But that gives you a stat, that established center line first. I learned that from Andreas Kalani. I don't know why I didn't learn it earlier, but <laughs> I only learned that like, you know, a couple years ago after knife, knife making for the last 15 years.
go. All right. So there's my completed prototype, Santuco. Let's move you back over to the middle and we'll finish up this live stream over here. Make sure we're all vertical on. I do the blade on vertical belt as opposed to horizontal belt. That's a good question. Uh, so I think it's being able to control. All right. So um, this is a good question. Um, JP Woodworth asked, why do the blade uh, horizontal, right? Instead of vertical on the platen. Um, now I do that sometimes when I'm kind of doing scratch patterns, but this way I can control my progression, right? I can control how much material is being removed and I can see it. If I do this, I can see the top of the blade, but I can't see the bottom of the blade, right? I can't see the edge and how thick it is, or I can't see the edge here. I want to be able to see my edge of the blade, so that way I know that I'm grinding evenly to that edge and or flipping it over and working on the spine. So there's my prototype right here's prototype versions from the other one, I actually really like this so far. It feels really good. The handle's a little thick, um, and I can probably taper these a little more. Again, this um, angle here on this front edge was just a 45, um, or it's kind of a, I just eyeballed it. But I think with these, they're a little bit tapered a little further back. Well, maybe not. That's pretty close. I'm actually always really happy with this one. I think, and it's just slightly under three quarters, so that's probably it. This just feels a little heavy in my hand because or a little fat in my hand because the three quarter is fat. Um, so I'll probably go down to just under three quarter of an inch, maybe like seven eighths, or no, I mean uh, five eighths or so for the entire thickness of the handle. But that's the, that's the reason why I make these, right? Is to be able to actually feel that, actually feel um, that feeling of that in my hand. Uh, are you talking about kind of belt? So that's a really good way to feel this in my hand and feel like feel what it feels like. I know that it feels a little fat here. These are the same, actually, this other, this wood. Funnily enough, this is actually a little bit narrower, this piece of wood that I used for the other templates. But um, there you go. So that's how I went through a template and the prototype. So I have my drawing. Uh, this is pretty close to my drawing. Yep, two inches. Uh, it actually matches it really closely, but that's my Santuco, my prototype, my wood prototype worked really well. I'm really happy with that. And now I can give this to my client and he can feel it and make sure he likes the feeling of this blade. He likes everything about it. Now, obviously there are some things that are going to be my design that, you know, if he wants a different design, it might be a different knife. So I have kind of those design um, ability to control the design, but he's got the ability to control whether or not he likes the handle length or the thickness or the shape. I can make all those changes. All right, guys. Um, thank you all so much um, for joining me. Next up is uh, Costas. Uh, check him out. Does some really cool wood turning on YouTube. Um, really good woodworker, as well as all the other uh, people who are going to be live today. Um, we're right on the edge, so I'm going to be posting all the links to all of the channels who are going live today in the description of this video. So if you're watching this, um, you can check it there. And if you're watching later, you can go and check out our other lives because I'm sure they'll post them. All right, everybody, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's been a blast. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and please let me know what you think. Like, subscribe if you want to. And you can also go and see the two videos where I made the Gyoto as well as the Journey Knife, um, both done with prototypes before I made them. Thanks, guys. It's been a blast. Thanks, everybody.